Okay. So I am going to um, be talking about data visualizations to support your narrative. So, you know, you, you probably saw the paragraph on, on uh, this talk and I've, I've shrunk down a little bit the, the scope, which I hope is okay. Uh, I think the scope originally was really could be a, a course or, you know, a, a certainly a, a very long workshop. Um, but I'm going to shrink it down to what I think is an important point, um, and that is how to support a narrative. So what we're going to be talking about is how to um, improve your ability to use data visualizations to strengthen your narrative. And we're going to focus on conveying information. And we're going to leave for another day issues of, of visual design, such as fonts and colors and stuff. And, and I'm going to caveat that because I actually think those things are important too. But the, the, on this talk, it's going to be mostly about conveying information. Um, so, so, you know, one way of thinking about this is I'm going to be focusing, you know, it's, there's things that are sort of more art and not really analysis. And, and there's a slide here, a picture here of tornado stuff in it. And they, um, what's called a spiral graph, a spiral bar chart. And I think these things are cool. And I, I there was a really nice one uh, in, in uh, uh, New York Times a while ago. I think my mother-in-law cut it out in, in hard paper and sent it to me. Uh, and, and, you know, it's interesting, the person who made this graph um, had this, this quote here, you know, I think you can see there are less reported tornadoes in the 50s, the inner part, and recently, but it's difficult to really compare them the way you could with a standard bar chart. Now, the bar chart would be kind of boring, but but it gets the point across, uh, if, you know, it, 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 and depending on exactly what point you're trying to make. So, and then the, the end point, he says, you know, this 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 chart turned out to be very cool to look at, but it's very weak analytically. And I think that's something to think about when you're when you're trying to prove a point, or you know, and as I'll say, you don't really prove you you provide evidence for a point you're trying to make. Um, now, um, there is, you know, art helps analysis. So I've been, I mean, basically, I've been saying is function before form, but often form really does support function. And here are two uh, apps, phone apps that I use. Um, and uh, one of them on the left is sleep. These are not the same day. I should have I should have had <laughs> both on my wrists and then and then had the same day. But that's anyway. It's not what I did. These are different days. But one shows you. They both show you sleep and and kind of the switching between um, being awake and R, uh, REM sleep and and light and deep. And I think the one on the right, even though it's they're pretty similar. It just it it looks much nicer, and I think the form really supports the analytics. It makes it much easier to understand what's happening throughout the night uh, to my sleep. Um, and I so I, so I'm caveating the, the earlier slide uh, that yeah you know you really do need to think if the the, the form is going to help the function. Okay, I want to make two points about narratives, however, and these are general points about any kind of narrative. Um, and um, let's see, make sure, oh, no questions yet, that's fine. It's, it's hard, to, hard for me to do both. Oh. So um, the hard part of narrative is the part that the listener disputes. And so you have to know your audience. Um, and uh, so if you're talking to VCs, what is it about the, your, your pitch that you think they're gonna disagree with? Or uh, if you're talking to some customers, and and uh, it, you you need to think what is what is it that they're going to dispute, and then to change the opinion you need to sort of use a path that's strewn with concepts that they're already familiar with, that that the listener already kind of knows. And this is exactly what analogies and metaphors do. You you say, hey, you know about this other thing, and so I'm going to take the, the 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 thing I'm point I'm trying to make, and I'm going to put it in this other context that you already understand. That's what analogy is. Um, and it's sort of scaffolding is another thing that teachers talk about. Like you can't teach a concept to the kids if they don't have sort of the pieces, other concepts that you can build upon. And I, and 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 uh, uh, you know if you're it's the it's the it's the path the the yellow brick road to uh, in in um, um, Wizard of Oz as opposed to you know the path to Mordor and and Tolkien uh, stories. Um, so, so you don't want the strange concepts, you want these familiar concepts. Okay, so now what does that mean for visual visualization, these two general points about narratives? Okay, so the first thing is, 
um, you want to uh, only use data for points that your listeners need to be convinced of because data is a pain. Analysis analyses are hard to do and um, it's hard to communicate a graph and we'll get to, uh, you know, in general graphs um, take time. So, so the listener has to kind of step back and try to grok or understand what's going on. Now, you can make that easier by using graphs that listeners are used to seeing. Um, and and my, my, uh, uh, my spouse came up with this uh, back a number of years ago for our daughters uh, with uh, a, um, a costume uh, in 2008. And it was just this line going down. And it was right after, you know, it was, it was October and it was, it was just after the, 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 the stock market crash and uh, the recession. And so we just had this line kind of going down. And, and, and pretty much everybody, you know, parents, knew what this was. She went up to the door and like, whoa, that's scary. And so, and why did that make sense? Well, because they're very used to seeing time series graphs. That's a very common thing. Colored graphs are very common. Bar charts, pie charts, even though they're hated by, you know, by the real visualization people, um, people are used to seeing them. So they do get the point across quickly. Scatter plots, we're gonna see a bunch of these. They're a little bit less familiar. Violin plots, probably don't even know what those are. I've never seen them before, kind of weird. Box and whisker plots. Um, some scientists are used to looking at those. Uh, they, they're great if you're used to it. Uh, cumulative distribution function plots, terrible. No one understands what those things are. Not no one, but it's unlikely. So, okay, so um, I wanted to do a quick aside on all the different kinds of fun graph types. And so I got to but I, uh, I got to stop sharing for a second in order to do this. Um, and then I have to share again. Um, and then I'll be able to show you that. Uh, yeah, so this is the R one. There's a bunch of these. If you just do kind of gallery, Google gallery uh, visualizations, and you know, you see there's these beautiful ridge line. There's a famous band called Joy Division that has shirts that look like uh, and an album with those on the front. Um, and there's bubble, you know, bubble graphs and, and lollipops. And this time series one is pretty slick. Um, stacked area charts, uh, you know, eng bundling. There's just lots of, the sand key is kind of cool. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff out there. And so to, to kind of inspire you, but I would say that a lot of these are not that uh, familiar. And so you have to be really careful if you're going to, uh, if you're going to work with them. So let me get back to my slide tab. Uh, there it is. Okay, so we should be back. Um, okay, so, so what are the steps that I'm suggesting? What point are you gonna to try to make with your data? That's the first thing to decide. And then of course, do you have this data and can you get it? And then actually, you know, if you think, yeah, data is there, or at least I can get it or I can collect it. Uh, it could be a pain, but I can do it. What, what, what should the graph kind of look like? So draw it out freehand before you even look at the data. Like what, what do you hope it looks like? Actually make the graph or make it yourself um, or have someone else work with you on it. Uh, and then try to make the same point with a more common graph. Like, can you simplify? Try to do that. And if you can't, then you have to be prepared to really spend a lot of time, um, um, a lot of time um, explaining it and annotating it. And really, you know, you're, you're going to take some valuable time and then you have to go back and think, is it worth it uh, for my narrative? Um, and then try to make it more visually appealing. And you can see it's sort of towards the end that I'm saying do that. And and I use the word fluff, it's not great, but you know you can try to have something um, that's eye catching with the data and a visual, you know, it may be um, an a a animation or something. But do that kind of at the end, and you can throw that up at the beginning of a presentation or or uh, of a um, kind of as the hook to get people to 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 sort of zoom in on what you're doing, but it's not gonna be where you actually try to uh, uh, make your point. Okay, so let's let's look at an example. Um, so let's say we have some narrative about politics in the USA. 
And let's say the audience believes that states are red or blue, the whole thing, they're either red or they're blue. And the blue states are on the coast and the red ones are somewhere else, but they're not on the coast. And, um, and so let's say you wanna convince them that actually counties are the proper unit and that urban versus rural is, is, is the critical distinction, not coast versus non-coast. And so now we have these graphs, these maps, which people understand pretty quickly. Uh, they're pretty. Uh, I didn't make them. I actually pulled these off offline, uh, online somewhere. Uh, and I have two of them there. I have urban versus rural. And uh, the rural ones are still the more green and dark green. And then everything else is, is uh, you know, red is super urban and yellowish is kind of urban also. Um, and, then, and then over here, we have Republican versus Democrat. And you can kind of see that there's some interesting stuff going on. Like Maine is on the coast, but it's got lots of these, um, uh, these rural counties over here. And they tend to be more Republican. And then in here, we tend to have like in Oregon and, and you know, California, you know, you've, you can see that there's a couple of uh, counties in here that are pretty red uh, and they're rural, uh, it, even in California and in Oregon. So, so there's something, this, this is the kind of stuff, yep, seems like something's going on here, but it's not, it's certainly not uh, proving the point. It's just starting to give you an inkling that maybe there's something more complicated. Maybe this point about counties is, is true. Um, okay, so then you can say, so obviously they made these maps, so there is some sort of data. Uh, uh, and it turns out there is data that you can get pretty easily uh, from do, two different places. Uh, one on the run on the uh, uh, urban rural and the other one on um, voting. And then I use pandas and uh, Python code, IPython notebook. Uh, and then I use some graphing libraries, matplotlib and Seaborn. Uh, and I did this on pythonanywhere.com and, and GitHub. And, um, uh, and there was, you know, some annoying data problems, uh, which there always are. You know, there was characters from in the Puerto Rican counties um, that, um, that were, that had diacritics in them that broke the Python uh, 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 code that I was trying to use. There were some missing county IDs in Rhode Island that was critical for, for joining together these two data sets. Uh, some of the missing, the votes were, were missing, incorrect delimiters, you know, space instead of a tab. And, and so I spent probably six or seven hours rank, data wrangling. And, that's, and, and then I spent like two hours making graphs. And that's extremely common that you spend 80% of your time fiddling, trying to fiddle with the data to get it into the form. And then it's just a line, little bit of time actually doing the, uh, the graph making. Um, so that's just something to kind of be aware of that that's totally common. If it's, if it's happening to you, that's normal. Okay. Okay. So some graphs finally, after all this time, uh, although those maps were sort of graphs. Um, all right. So first things, the axes, urban, rural, let's see if I got any questions or any questions. Not yet. Um, okay. That's good. I guess. Um, uh, well, uh, back, back. So um, the first one, uh, so I've got percentage voting Democrats. So it's percentage. So the number of votes divided through by the total votes um, and going from zero to 100. And then on the, um, on the axis, on the X axis, we've got urban on the number one and then number nine is rural. And these are, these are codes that are assigned by that, that data set that I mentioned. Uh, of you know one through nine, so there isn't a 4.5 rural. They just give these integer values. So that means things cluster around. Uh, or they don't cluster; just simply on these stripes, uh, and they land on top of one another. Uh, and so what I did was I made the dots. And there's a dot for every county, and uh, what I did is I made the dots a little bit transparent. And now you kind of see in the second one across the top that yeah, there's a bunch of dots down here that are, you know, it's more uh, um, opaque in here. So that means it's probably a lot more of these, these counties that are very rural that, are, that are, have a low percentage of votes for Democrats. And, and then you see it more in these violin plots. These are called violin plots. And you see that, hey, the distribution 
and really that you know it could just be one sided it, they just open it they flip the distribution open and then you can uh it looks like a violin and then you have um uh you can see that it's starting to be a little convincing that yeah these rural counties are way down in the 20 percent range and the urban counties also are pretty low kind of surprisingly you're like whoa it's kind of low but it's got the mean values are these dots there and the colors don't really mean anything but that's it it did it automatically in in the package i was using so so then uh, you know it's still like kind of surprising this is uh, 2016 um it's like well what's going on here why isn't this higher up here and what i did was then i made the size of the dots represent the number of votes in the counties Not, so there's percentage of the county uh voting a certain way but maybe the the uh some big counties that have lots of votes uh go more uh more democrat for example and sure enough uh you can see here it's these big circles are the counties with lots of votes and they tend to be higher up so you get down below 40 percent and you don't have very many big circles and by the way when you come over here on these counties they're, they're rural counties and percentage wise they vote a lot one way but boy they're small they're small so this started to convince me. I'm like, okay, I, I agree with this. So is this what I'm going to show somebody when I try to convince them? Does is this make sense? Is there an easier way to, to give this information than, than uh, this? Now, I love these graphs. I spent a lot of time making them. I'd love to show them this, you know, especially this one. This one is kind of convincing. Like maybe do that one and then that one. Um, so, so, but I have to, you have to wean yourself off of uh, showing the graph that took you the most time to make. Um, and, and, and so one th thought I had was maybe I do this at the state level because then I don't have zillions of dots. And I also have, uh, and I maybe I have more of a continuous thing on the uh, X axis. So I went to this and I think it's slightly better. So, so a note that now I, you have to kind of think you have to change the way you're thinking about these graphs a little bit, at least my X axis, my um, X my y-axis still is percentage of vote for a Democrat. And, but now on, on the x-axis, it's, it's the percentage of votes that are coming from a rural county. So it's still, you know, a huge portion are coming in the zero and then, and then uh, from, from urban, very urban states and very rural states. And then if you actually label them, it's kind of cool. It comes out the way you expect to, Wyoming, very rural, lots of votes coming from rural areas and and not many are, are for Democrats. And Vermont's an outlier, very rural, but, and it's kind of makes sense, it's a nice story. So this kind of looks about right. Uh, there's still some, some issues down here, but, and I think this is kind of possible to read. Um, and I, it's a little bit easier than the, um, than the, uh, uh, the last, than, you know, than these slides, uh, these graphs. But can we even make it simpler? Can we use just a bar graph? Now, and I'm gonna fix this up a little bit more because uh, again, the colors are kind of random. Uh, they are random in fact. Um, and, but we here what I did was I just, um, um, I just accumulated across, got rid of the state definition. I just said, hey, let's just take all votes in urban counties what percentage uh, of all the votes are going for um, um, Democrats. And then you see this nice line. And I think this is really the simplest way of viewing it. And I wanna go to the next one where I took some, I, I added in some, some, fo some uh, form where I have, you know, most blue up here and the most red down here. And, and here at this graph, uh, uh, really makes the point quickly that, hey, uh, it's about counties. And if you look at the urban to rural counties, you, you, um, uh, you can see clearly that the, the, the percentage of vote for Democrats is going down as you become more rural. And this is really the graph that I think should be shown. I would love to show these because they're fun and cool, but, and, and, you know, it takes this, I do think it'd be good to show these and then just say, okay, so is it true? Is it, is it, does it look, does it really come out the way it seems to look here? And then just show this graph and say, yeah, it does. It's bar chart. Everyone understands. And it's going from, it's going from high to low 
which usually means bad. So I can, it depends if you're, if you're showing it to progressives, this is, this is the way you do it. If you, if you're showing it to people that want more Republican vote, you'd flip it around, uh, and, and make it go up, uh, so that it became more urban. I'm sorry. Uh, um, more urban and then you show how, how um, it would go the other direction or, or something along those lines. Or you, you actually, the best thing to do would be a uh, percentage of voting for, rep, for Republicans and then it would go up. Um, so, cause up going from left to right up is usually means good uh, and going down is bad. Uh, um, and and that, that's the metaphor that people are used to seeing. Okay, so let's see. Uh, any, can you recommend any um, similar workshops? Let's see, to read through this, probably think about convincing visualization strategy. Yeah, um, it's a good question. And, and part of um, um, what I've been seeing is, 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 like I said, people like to make graphs that are really convincing, but the point I'm making is that if you don't have much time to make that point, you really need to work with graphs that they're already used to. And so I, I uh, so there are plenty of, plenty of them. Um, but I, do I know of any that are, uh, I don't know of any offhand, um, but certainly, um, yeah. So yep, the short answer is no, I don't um, uh, know of, know of them, but I, I would be, I, I would be careful to make sure that they, they use, they use the graph, to, to make a point. Um, or, you know, eye candy is beautiful. It, it's, it's useful. It gets people, it's like a hook in a song. Uh, so it, it's very, it's also completely valid to make a, a, a graph that that's cool to look at and, and, and provide some information. I, I don't think that's a, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's just not what I was talking about in this talk. Of course, that Tufty's uh, uh, courses, uh, I've seen the book. I've never actually taken the course. But, but people, I have plenty of friends who have, and they love those. They love those courses. They're pretty pricey, or if I was in Minnesota, I would say spendy. Uh, and and uh, so I, I do. I kind of feel like, well, those are those are pretty expensive. But I do think they're good. Uh, I'm not sure that um, that you can't get the same quality out of um, glancing through some of his 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 uh, his work. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and then the only other thing I want to say was um, additional work is needed. Uh, and I wanted to make this point, like this graph is not perfect. Um, and and it's, it's not, it doesn't prove the point. Now, part of the point is that I mentioned before, is nothing proves the point uh, in, in data. And it's not like math where you have a bunch of postulates and then you say, if we accept those one, two, three, four, we're done. It's, you just provide evidence. And, um, and there's always ways of arguing against the graphs. Uh, I would need to look at coastal rural counties versus heartland rural counties, and, and also the urban distinction uh, and on the coast and the heartland. And that would lend even more uh, uh, power to the, um, to the point that I'm trying to make. So, so yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm, uh, what I wanted to say. And, um, we're only halfway through the time. I, you know, if it was, if we, if we were all in person, I would say, hey, why don't we, um, why don't you think about what points, what point you want to make as some narrative, and and then write out, you know, uh, think about how, whether or not you can get the data. We could ignore that part, but make a graph that you would want that you think would would be convincing uh, to you and how you'd want the data to come out. Um, I, I, uh, and then, um, and then we could, we could talk about it, but I, I, I find it difficult to do this in the, uh, in this sort of, um, uh, vir virtual space, uh, as easily, uh, if we had, you know, sort of zoom breakout rooms and things, maybe it would be possible, but certainly over chat, it's going to be tough. Uh, so, so anyway, it can be a little uh, tough. I'm just joining. Joining because yeah, I yeah. wasn't quite sure if you needed something um, or if you had questions about how how to do it. But I think basically, like, what might be good, Mark? Actually, can you go back real quick to those those points? Those sure. what you just had for the 
the numbers. That's I was like, what is the word? <laughs> awesome. But I will I will make a call out to attendees here as well, guys, because I know that there's like 70 of you here. Like take a screenshot of this slide and use it like in your off time. I know a few of you guys in the Q&A, you know, section were asking about courses and such, but this is a great, this is a great way to, in your free time to almost go through some of the, the thoughts that Mark shared with you here today. Mark, did you want to add on that? I don't want to hide, oh, no, someone no, already no. screenshotted it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Becky, um, there, you know, it depends on, uh, like I said, I think, uh, I think it's, um, uh, let's see, where was my, uh, oh yeah, these things. I, you know, I think you can make the graphs however you want. Um, and and the point I wanted, I, I'm trying to make in this talk, which is a little different than the, than the common ones, is that um, simple graphs are usually better if you don't have a lot of time. If, if, you, if, if you don't, if your audience, um, you, you want, and actually simple is not the way the point, you want to use the graphs that people are used to looking at. And so if you're talking, to traders, they're very used to these graphs that have it's like a time series and it has sort of an up and a down stuff and and uh, um, uh, and and I find them kind of hard to read, but 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 traders don't; they're used to reading them. So so you want to use graphs that are similar to whatever uh, it is that you're that the people are used to seeing. And I have, I have another story about that. I I worked on I used to work on the hidden Markov model model so modeling type. Um, uh, technique and usually you have it's states. So you have a state here, state here, state here, state here, and arrows connecting them and 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 uh, and sometimes looping back. And that's the way people think about it. So state starting state here and the ending state here, and it goes like that. Now I was working with like a hierarchy, so I had the start state up here that went down like that. And they, I I, I presented this to um, PhD students uh, uh, at BU, very very good group. Um, of uh, electrical engineers, and they were like, and speech recognition people, and they were like, "That's not a hidden Markov model." I'm like, "Well, yeah, I, I was, I didn't know what to do." And then I realized, like, "Oh, it, it's just because they, it, I just had to turn the slide, and it was actually at the time when it was a, 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 a actual foil, so I could, I could just turn the slide on the projector, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, we see it." So it was amazing to see how. Um, people are just very familiar with certain types uh, uh, of graphs and if you use those types you can get the point across really fast and if you don't you really have to be uh, prepared to put the time in to recommend to to, to uh, describe what the axes are what each point means and all that and all that kind of work that you don't have to do if they um, if they understand but you know you Python is fine R is fine fine. Uh, Tableau is fine. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever, um, whatever is going to help you. Um, but, but be, be aware that you're going to spend the majority of your time getting the data in the right form to jam it into those things. Uh, that's, that's actually usually the hardest. So thanks for that question, Becky. Ah, so you wanted some books. I know Sean, I don't see Sean. Uh, yeah, you know, it's so fluid. There's so, there's so much I'm trying to see, um, in my bookcase here, I just sort of stopped, uh, using, you know, buying books that way. I'm on a Kindle. Um, I, I just, uh, uh, again, um, I'm not, interestingly, I, I so I'm not a, a, a visualization expert. It's something that I do on the side as a data scientist. Um, but um, yeah, I don't have, I mean, I, I find the O'Reilly books in general to be good. Um, and, um, but um, um, mileage will vary, um, kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, there's this nice New York Times thing that I just found, um, which is kind of cool. Um, over 60 New York Times graphs for, um, for students uh, to analyze. Um, I, I just I think there's just a ton out there. It's almost too much, which is part of the reason why you're asking me, Sean. I realize is you're you're, you're saying, hey, can you narrow it down for me? And I, I apologize, I don't I don't. These are the things I use here. I I use um, I use a lot of Python, and I, I just kind of look at graphs um, and uh, and 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 uh, on on Google, just looking for 
looking around to see an image uh, uh, image searches for the types of graphs I'm looking for. Yeah. Let's see. And I, I just try to do stuff. There was a neat, uh, there was a, 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 a blog by some um, uh, visualization people where they would, um, they would like every week they would send a postcard back and forth with a, with a, um, a visualization that they'd drawn freehand of data, of, of a particular type of data that they were, they were trying to show. And they just, and the point I'm making, is kind of like writing do visual, make visualizations and, and do, do it do a lot of it. And that's how you get better at it. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's what I would say, but you don't have a lot of time for that. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see, Becky is any sources for entrepreneurs that can go for help, uh, with visualization production. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I think I, again, because of the 80% part, you basically need a data scientist. Uh, or you need, so you could go, you could consult with a data scientist and, uh, and get them to help you, um, manipulate. Cause I, that, again, that's going to be the hard part is how do you get the data into the form so that you can make these graphs? Um, and, uh, and then the data scientist will just generate lots of graphs and ask you, well, what about, about this? What about this? What about this? So, so the question is, um, can you get a consultant, uh, a data science consultant. And I believe there are lots of different sources for that. Just like, you you know, when you're trying to get a full stack engineer or I don't know, someone to help you with AWS um, on the tech side, I think. So I, I basically what I'm saying is I would look at the, um, the same place you'd be looking for technology consulting. Uh, there's data science consulting resources out there. And, and they can help you with visualization is what I'm basically saying. Which is different from AI and machine learning. So I would say, you know, look more towards uh, data science or data and uh, analytics or, you know, data analyst. Um, although they t data analysts tend to be weaker on the, on the data manipulation on the, um, um, the data wrangling, as they call it. So, cool. All right. Let's see. Is there anything in the ch in the messages? I don't see anything else coming through the chat. So I would definitely say attendees. I know you know there's like sixty five of you still here. Um, so this is your last call for questions. So if you have any other questions, so in the Q&A or in the chat or something, we'll give you guys like another minute or two, but then we'll probably wrap it up. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got another point. one. <laughs> okay. In your experience, how do uh, we search what kind of visualizations speak to different market segments, mental health providers, catering to seniors? Uh, any suggestions on how to do our research, which visualizations work for a particular market segment? Yeah. So the question, so what I do is I try to see what, what are they looking at? Like what, so, so for, um, mental health providers, I would go and look and see what, look at their, the magazines that, that are that, you know, it's an old school magazine, but, 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 um, I would look at whatever, uh, um, publications they tend to look at and see what graphs are being used there. Uh, and, and edu in, in the mental health, education, what graphs are they looking at? Um, and so I would look at what try, I would try to get a sense of what they're, you know, go to, go to a conference that they go to and see what, what graphs people are putting up on the, uh, uh, during their, during their presentations to, to these healthcare providers. And so, yeah, it's all about, uh, it's all about, um, looking at what they're looking at. Uh, that's, that's, so, and, and obviously you should be doing that anyway. So you sort of have a sense of what, uh, where they are at and what they believe, um, as you're, as you're, um, trying to, um, understand that a segment. So yeah, going to conferences and just starting to get a sense of what kind of graphs are they looking at? Uh, what other, what are other people showing them? Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I go to scholar and stuff like that, but I don't know, then, then it's, you know, then you're off in this, this very, very academic -y area, which may or may not be, I mean, a lot of that mental health providers obviously have some academic background. 
so that'd be useful there. But like um, traders and stuff, it's not, they're not, they're, they're probably not reading as much academic stuff. Um, so yeah, Anna, sorry, I don't, I don't know the, the, the workshop space. Um, I, I apologize. I will say though, Anna, if you are looking for more data type events, Startup Boston is happy to help you out. So if you want to go to startupboss.org, I'm putting the URL in the chat, but that is the website to our volunteer organization, the event that you're currently at right now. Um, but if you want to go and suggest, you know, new ideas, just contact us there and I'll probably rope and mark for those as well. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good question. I, I simply don't know the, the education space um, that well. I, I will say there is, I knew of a, there was a, a conference in, in um, Minnesota where I was for 11 years. Um, I'm now in Boston, but um, there was a, um, but it, it was very, it was sort of a design. Like it was, it was like a design group and then a data group. It was an interesting kind of, um amalgamate uh, you know uh fusion of the two and that's where I, that's what i was trying to say is that there is in this visualization space you start to get a lot of form before function is you know how does it look cool enough is it and and that's it's important but again part of the point of this thing is that as data scientists i'm trying to i'm more interested in what does the date what how do i use data to prove a point and for that um you're, you're better off with very simple graphs, but at some of these visualization workshops, that's not what they're going to be working on. They're going to be working on how can we use the coolest, uh, kind of sexiest thing, hippest thing around. And there's value in that. And, and sometimes you can really get interesting insights from those, but they tend to be pretty difficult to, to show to an audience uh, when you don't have a lot of time. You've got to spend a lot, you have to invest a lot of time bringing the audience along to understand, to, to be able to see what it is you see and what you're getting out of the, the visualization. Um, so th there's some risks there is what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you, Mark. This has been very insightful. Um, really, really appreciate your time here today. And for all of the attendees out there, thank you so much as well for being here and for attending and for asking some amazing questions. Um, if you did want to connect with Mark, if you go to the help desk um, at the top of your page, he's going to be listed in the speaker link, but you can definitely connect with him on LinkedIn right there. Also, actually, let me put his LinkedIn. I'm going to put your LinkedIn. Thank you. I did chat to make this even easier right now. I'm like, what am I saying? I could just point people to the URL. Thank you. Guys, it's day four and I need more coffee, but there's his LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with him. He's an awesome person. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and then definitely stay tuned. We're going to have another data event coming right on up. So if you click agenda at the top, you can see what else is on the radar. And Mark, thank you so, so much again for your time. And I'll talk to you soon. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for the. Have a good one, guys. Take care, everyone.